Today we're going to use this urethane resin and we're going to cast some screwdriver handles. Make sure to check the video from last week on how to make a silicone casting mold. That's the mold we're going to use this week when we cast these urethane handles. Now this is a punch down tool for my winemaking website and these are used to punch grape skins down as they kind of rise to the surface when you're making wine. But if you have a little screwdriver handle mold, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. You can make screwdriver handled bottle openers. Um, anything you want to have a screwdriver handle on, you can do it. A spatula, grill tools, anything. So this is one of those processes that you really want to make sure you have everything ready before you even get started. So make sure all your molds are set up and ready to go. You don't want to be fiddling with anything once your resin is mixed. This stuff, you don't, just don't want it to cure at all before you start to pour it. Uh, you're going to need something to mix in. I'm using these little solo cups and you're going to want two of them. Um, something to mix with. I have some little fiberglass stir sticks you can use like a tongue depressor, popsicle stick, just something nice and clean to stir that resin with. I'm using um, Smoothcast 326. I think this is kind of the sweet spot for what I'm doing here. There, this is a nice, really hard um, polyurethane. I think it's a um, 72 Shore D, I wanna say. It's pretty hard stuff. Here, I'll knock it on here so you can hear it. Um, it's nice and tough too, but what I like about the 326 versus the 325 or the 327 is the pot life. So this stuff has a nine minute pot life, which gives you just enough time to vacuum the bubbles out of it. Um, and it doesn't take too long to cure. It only takes about an hour to cure at 73 degrees. So you can even speed that up with a little bit of heat if you want. The 325 is a super fast pot life. It's only like two and a half minutes. So it's really hard to work with. You just gotta be really quick with that stuff. And it also gets so hot when it starts to cure that it, um, it can expand. It's just a little bit harder to work with, especially if you're a beginner. And the 327 is much slower. So that might be something you might wanna choose if you don't have a little vacuum chamber like this because it'll more naturally kind of allow those bubbles to work their, ways, their way out of it. Otherwise, they're all gonna basically feel the same when you're done casting with them. So I've got my molds all set up. Um, I've got this little die here. This is something offered from Smooth On. I don't think you necessarily have to use their brand. It's their UVO series black die and a little bit of this stuff goes a really long way. Um, you want to try not to get it on your hands because it'll just get everywhere. It's really kind of the kind of stuff that you get one drop of it and all of a sudden it's all over you. Um, you're probably going to want some paper towels for that reason too if you do spill any of this stuff because once this resin hardens um, it's really hard to get off of any surface. Um, this stuff here you can mix it one to one by volume so you don't necessarily need a scale you can just fill two cups the same height and um, mix it that way but I'm actually going to use a scale because I don't want to have to waste one extra cup. So if you use a scale it's 115 to 100 by weight. So the math might be a little bit easier for you if you think of it as a percentage. Um, that's 53.5% of part A to 46.5% um, part B. So if you can figure out about how much you need, just multiply it by 0.535 and that'll give you how much of part A. And by 0.465 that'll give you how much of part B to use. For me I'm going to use um, 120 grams of part A and 104 grams of part B and that'll give me enough to make three screwdriver handles because I'm going to pour three of these at the same time. And I'm going to get a stopwatch on my phone here ready because I don't want to lose track of time and have this stuff kind of start to set up on me. So I'll make sure that once I hit about the five or six minute point I'm ready to get over there and start pouring these little molds. So we'll go ahead and we'll um, get started with pouring this stuff. And I've already shook this up. You want to shake it up. Um, I don't mind shaking it up and letting it settle for five or ten minutes though because it just fills up with bubbles if you shake it up and then immediately pour it. So we'll go ahead and we'll take part A 
and I'm going to pour 120 grams. Make sure to put paper down when you're doing this stuff because anything that's spilled, it's just, like I said, it's really hard to clean up, especially if it cures. And if you're not exactly spot on, don't get too worried about it. This stuff is pretty reliable and um, I haven't ran into any trouble with it curing at all. So now we'll zero this. And now is when I'm going to start my stopwatch because as soon as you mix part A and part B together, that's when things are going to get a little bit, you know, time sensitive on you. And you'll see once I mix this, I'm just going to dip my, um, my mixer into this black dye. You could go by drops or something if you want to use a syringe to apply this, but I'm just going to give it a little dip and that'll be plenty to make these handles nice and black. So I don't know if you can see in there right now, but it's mixing really nice. The color is nice and black. It won't look like jet black right away. It kind of has like a little bit of a gray look to it, but from my experience, once you cast it, it will kind of turn that kind of jet black color like the handle over there. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it into a fresh cup because anything that sticks to the sides could just end up not mixing all the way. So by using a fresh cup, you just assure that this stuff is, um, doesn't have any, you know, part A or part B that's not fully mixed. Because that could make it sort of cloudy on you. I'll just give it another little mix. You don't want to spend all day mixing here because, like I said, it's a little time sensitive. You can use a fresh mixer if you want, but I'm not, like, too worried about it. Now I'm going to take my vacuum chamber and we're going to throw this in here. This will expand all the bubbles and let them kind of vacuum out of there. So we're at almost six minutes and just about all the bubbles are out of here. So we're going to go ahead and slowly release the vacuum. And then we'll run over to the other room and we'll start to pour this stuff. Just gonna give this a little, little kind of stir and a little tap, because there's kind of a ledge on here that a bubble can get trapped in. And we'll do that for all of these. Fill it right up to the top. After your resin's fully cured, you can go ahead and remove the molds or kind of pull the handles out. And if you've got an air compressor and an air nozzle, it's going to be a lot easier. You can kind of just inflate them right off. Um, otherwise, you can try running some water just to make it a little more slippery, kind of slide it off. Um, a couple more tips when you're doing this. Be until your resin sets up, you can kind of top up the molds because 
these will shrink just a tiny, tiny bit. So if you just kind of pour a couple drops on as it's kind of setting up until it, you know, can't pour on anymore once it starts to thicken a little bit too much. Um, also, if you get any little burrs on the edges, like where the little kind of flash comes off of the mold, you might get a little sharp edge here. And you can use something like a little scuffing wheel on a Dremel tool just to super lightly just kind of brush that and knock that little burr off the edge. But really not that difficult of a thing to try at home if you want to make, you know, maybe for Christmas or whatever you want to make some um, screwdriver handled bottle openers for your friends. Uh, next week what I'll do is I'll show you how to fill in all the little letters here with paint just to make it look a little bit cooler. If you like these kinds of videos make sure to click subscribe below and if you want to see where you can buy these little wine punch down tools go to smartwinemaking.com. Thanks for watching.